supporting to drink minimum through the Amazon link is the next step in the evolution. Celebrity voice impersonator. From the pages of the World Wrestling Federation magazine, here's update. Mm-mm. Part of people in place to be what's going on. It's me, it's me. <clears throat> so what culture came out with a list? Ten lamest wrestling pay-per-view concepts ever. Ever? Ever, 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 ever. Let's let's get to the prejudgment. If they're talking about concepts, bragging rights. If they're talking about names, over the limit, breaking point, shit like that. TLC. TLC is a shitty. TLC is a terrible pay-per-view. And it's coming up as I'm taping this. TLC is a shitty pay-per-view concept. Like, it's just bad. It's just awful. It's stupid. It's fucking retarded. <laughs> it's fucking retarded. Let's see what they have to say starting right now. With pay-per-views taking a decided back seat in the WWE Network, the idea has been put forth to reduce the number of WWE pay-per-views from the annual dozen. Not a bad idea considering there's been nothing of note that really happens in any secondary events like Payback, Fastlane or Night of Champions. There's really no point in spending three weeks to build up a match that pretty much falls flat as a pancake. And then that way, we won't have to worry about some of the totally horrendously lame ideas oh, for pay-per-views. Oh, WWE like, apparently didn't get the memo because now there's 19 goddamn pay-per-views a year. Concepts ever. They didn't watch this apparently. Tuesday, Tuesday or Cyber Sunday. Once the WWE product <coughs> began a slow decline in the post-invasion dregs of 2002, fans became more outspoken and critical of the company they'd held so dear during the Attitude Era highs. In theory, putting together a pay-per-view where the fans got to vote the matches seemed like an absolutely brilliant idea. The problem was, they didn't go all the way with it. It was stupid voting choices, like mm -hmm. which gimmick should Mick Foley portray, mm -hmm. or what preferred outfit would the Divas wear in a battle royal. They weren't exactly inspiring. You might as well have asked if they wanted fries with that as well. Number well, here's here's what happened. He's, he's right and he's wrong. Um, the first one actually did give fans options, uh, ta a Taboo Tuesday. It actually did give fans options. Here's the problem. The fans didn't vote the way WWE wanted them to vote. The fans didn't vote for who they wanted the fans to vote for. And Vince McMahon loves control over his fucking company, so then he took away all the good options. That's what happened. He, bas he basically DNC'd the shit. <laughs> <laughs> he basically Podesta emailed that shit and was like, uh, "Let's change, uh, let's change this match." To, let's, okay, so now you have the the, the option between a, a, a debate, a thumb wrestling match, or a no holds barred match. Like, fuck out of here, Vince. <laughs> fuck out of here with that horse shit, Vince. All right, breaking point is coming up. Nine. Breaking point. Yep. After Brock Lesnar's hammering yep. an opponent at the UFC 100 during 1.6 million buys, WWE decided to run a pay-per-view based upon submissions. Three submission matches were booked in what turned out to be the lone breaking point in the company's history. Perhaps it was because the event took place in Montreal that inspired the WWE to rerun the screw job finish in CM Punk's victory over The Undertaker. That, with John Cena making Randy Orton submit after surviving a handcuff beating, made it for a pretty standard night of WWE sameness. The fans weren't so much a breaking point, more like boiling point. Number eight, the elimination Yeah, breaking point was a stupid fucking idea. It was dumb. Like, you don't... They over-fucking-did it. Like, they, 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 you know, it's almost like they got desperate, but I don't understand why they got desperate, because they had... It's not like WWE didn't have a, a good formula beforehand. You know what I mean? Like, I'd have been perfectly happy with the fucking judgment... Continuing a judgment day or all the shit that you had during the attitude era, but no, you want to change it up. Well, all right, there's a reason you didn't pick those fucking names ten years ago, but now, okay, here we go. Elimination Chamber, cool. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the idea of an Elimination Chamber match. In fact, no? one of my favorite matches to play on the PlayStation. The pay-per-view, however, has its placement on the calendar all wrong. The first three yes. Chamber matches took place in completely different months, November 2002, August 2003 and January 2005. The chamber was only ever needed when drastic measures were taken to settle scores. TLC and Hell in a Cell suffer from the same watering down value. When yep, the chamber that's true. to create its own pay per view, it became a building block to WrestleMania instead of a feud ender. Number seven, this Tuesday in Texas. Yes. Yes, he's right. He's damn right. He's damn right. There's, listen, especially when it's just, when it's just, then that. So you place it in February, 
just before WrestleMania, so that the matches, and by the way, the matches then become for number one contenderships and or for the title, so, so and or now with the brand split, but for, for two titles, so you, so you have either six guys in there who want the champ, or you have five guys in there with the champ, including which possibly includes the fucking Rumble winner from the month before. So what the goddamn fuck is the point of the fucking Royal Rumble then? <sighs> Although, to be fair, the Royal Rumble wasn't always for number one contendership. That didn't start until 93. But it's a gra it was a great thing to add on top of it. That's, that's a hell of a draw. That's a great thing to add on top of it, especially that close to WrestleMania. That was a great thing to do. And they fucking negated it for fucking Elimination Chamber, which they could have... They could have, the thing about the, the Elimination Chamber, ugh, I know, they wanted to get the most use out of it because they spent X amount of millions of dollars on it, fine. Break it out once a year, not at the same time every year, just like somebody, you know, to build that shit up. It doesn't have, <sighs> use it sparingly, is all I'm saying. All right, boom. In 1991, WWE undertook an uh, yeah, a this Tuesday in Texas is weird. the TNA did exactly the same thing out of necessity, the wrestling giant dabbled with the idea of running weekly pay-per-views. A mere six days after The Undertaker defeated Hulk Hogan for the WWE Championship and Survivor Series, the company staged a rematch for a special Tuesday pay-per-view. Estimates on the actual amount of buyers that this Tuesday in Texas received vary, but it's believed that it only drew in half the purchases of the Survivor Series, despite promoting Savage's first match in eight months. This pay-per-view experiment was a resounding flop. Ooh, yeah! Number six, in your house. Yeah, it was the a flop. The events themselves were usually fine and were basically treated like two hour pay editions on Saturday night's main event, where the entire roster yeah. wouldn't necessarily be featured. What earns in your nope. house a place on this list as a That's concept right. of the idea of an original show? One lucky fan was actually going to win a new house. That's mental. A new house. Just think about that. <laughs> the expanded pay-per-view calendar was born not only of WWE's desire to keep locked up with WCW, but used a free house giveaway as justification for fans to buy the events. They only ran the promotion once, but the name still stuck. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they ran a welcome to in your house, don't try this at home promo. Number five, December to dismember. And please, please, can we all disremember this dismember of a December? Try saying that when you're drunk. Beginning in 2003, Raw got four exclusive no, no. shows. No, I wanted me to do that. Down. A year later, the calendar stretched to 14 total pay-per-views, with Raw and SmackDown mm -hmm. now each having five, supplementing the time-tested Big Four. After ECW One Night Stand helped the spin off of the ECW brand, they too got their own exclusive event, with the roster so thin that it was transparent. After it drew up a fuck it, yeah, it was fucking buys, paper thing. Views once more featured full squads. Number four, Night of Champions. You knew it was getting. They fucked that thing every way from Sunday. And I've had people tell me that, you know, CM Punk wasn't going to be the guy, but it was one of the things that CM Punk uh, was in the Elimination Chamber. And he lost, and it's upset. CM Punk was never wasn't going to be that guy at that point. <sighs> Fine. Why not keep it on RVD? Oh, he smokes some weed. That's his character. You tight ass. Get the fuck over it. Or the Big Show, even Lashley. Lashley. I don't give a fuck. Nobody gave a fuck about Lashley then. That was fucking. Nobody gave a fuck. Nobody gave a fuck. Boom. Bad in 2015 when WWE felt that they needed to put belts on Daniel Bryan and John Cena solely because they realized that they needed two proven stars to elevate the belts from the dead. Cena did an incredibly good job, but it shouldn't have had to come to that. Night of Champions as an idea underscores what an awful job the WWE does of getting belts over. You shouldn't need an event where That's the right. is, we have belts, and they'll be given over right. to other people. Or maybe, we don't right. know. It should be a given that they have belts and they're going to be put on the line. If you have to get fans excited right. by saying, this show is about champions, you're also saying that the other shows aren't. And at times, that's been accurate too. Maybe the champions shouldn't lose non-title matches on TV all the time. Number three, no holds... Hey, guess what? Night of Champions used to be called WrestleMania. Had all your championships on the line at WrestleMania's. Hey, guess what? Night of Champions used to be called WrestleMania. Now it's Clash of the Champions. It's fucking stupid. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. All the belts are on the all the belts are on the line. 
why is that why is that special? Should shouldn't they most shouldn't they be on the line for the most part? Like most like on on a, on a pretty monthly basis. Like isn't isn't the isn't the rule that was established years ago that the champions are supposed to defend their belts every thirty days or so any fucking way? Why? Oh, because they're defending them on Rawls too or Smackdowns too. Like what? Are, what are we doing? Fuck are we doing? Fuck up! Oh, fuck. Logic, logic. WWE just fucking just use some goddamn logic sometimes. All right, boom. In 1989, Hulk Hogan starred in an yeah, awful movie. Yeah, that was stupid. Where he basically <laughs> that was what was fighting movie. an evil TV executive through the henchman Zeus. Shortly after Christmas 1989, <clears throat> WWE ran a double feature on pay per view featuring the movie itself, followed by a steel cage tag team match pitting Hogan and Brutus Beefcake against Macho Man Randy Savage and Zeus. The only problem was it was pre-recorded two weeks earlier and it was fine. Not good, not bad, fine. Number two, bragging rights. The brand extension lost yeah. its flavor sometime around 2004 to 2000. Told you. Told you. Told you, told you, told you. Told you so. I told you so. I, I, I told you so. Bragging rights. Fucking retarded. Let's go. 2005, where it was apparent that anything with any momentum on SmackDown was going to be couriered over to the flagship Raw. And that's what made it all the weirder in 2009 when bragging rights concept came to be. The entire show was centered around the supposed rivalry between Raw and SmackDown. The problem was, there were so many annual drafts, brand loyalty ceased to exist. Not to mention the lack of a general manager and the use of guest mm -hmm. hosts in 2009. Awful. Just awful. Number one, Fatal 4-Way. And it doesn't get any more unimaginative than this. At least with TLC, you're promising fans a car crash, even if it is stuck to a spot on the calendar. Likewise with Helena Cell, as a match, people would look forward mm -hmm. to a few as it was enticing. The same, unfortunately, can't be said for a Fatal 4-Way. An event with a pair of, yes, Fatal 4-Way matches for two World Championships. Yay. The idea that a Fatal 4-Way could be such a novelty that it would require its own review <laughs> speaks volumes on how desperately out of ideas the company was at that moment. Dip yes, Fatal 4-Way. Let's talk about Fatal 4-Way. Let's talk about the first Fatal 4-Way match that was in WWF. By the way, uh, in February of 97, it involved Bret the Hitman Hart, The Undertaker, Vader, and Stone Cold Steve Austin for the, heavy, for the vacant heavyweight title. <sighs> awesome. It's what Fatal 4-Way matches were supposed to be. And the title of the pay-per-view was Fatal 4-Way in your house. It was amazeballs. Go find it. Go find it. Go find that in your house. Go find it from 97. Go find it. February 97. Go find that shit. It was amazing. Fucking Vader. Vader's face got busted so far open that he had to take his mask off and it was like he was wearing another mask this time of blood underneath that first mask. Congealed blood underneath that first mask. Oh my god. It was brutal. It was brutal. It was good too. It was good too. Good finish and everything. Yeah. Don't, don't. I, for, I, you know what? I forgot that they made Fatal 4-Way a fucking pay-per-view. And at the time, I said, that's the stupidest fucking concept for a fucking pay-per-view. Because you, cause you're having to contrive for people to put into this fucking match. And it feels inorganic. As opposed to the first Fatal 4-Way match, it was fucking organic. The way those four came together. Because of the rumble. And Austin eliminating people. Even though he was already eliminated. And all this other shit. Like, it felt fucking organic when they did it then. And then, God, it fucking feels fucking contrived and hokey and hackneyed at, at that point when you got to make a pay-per-view out of it. Fucking hell. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, but I honestly think that maybe Breaking Point is probably a bit dumber than that, than Fatal 4-Way. But maybe not. Like, now that I think about it, Fatal 4-Way is probably, probably the lamest fucking WWE pay-per-view concept I can think of. Am I wrong? Let me know what you think down there in the comments section. Like, share, subscribe. Hit those links in the description on your way out. That's uh, two drink minimum uh, Amazon links. It's eBay links. That's Groupon links. That's the two drink minimum swag store. That's a tip the creator button if you're watching this on VidMe, which you should be doing because VidMe rocks. Like, go watch it on VidMe and then click the tip the creator button down there. Help people lights onto the party and party people. That, unlike these fucking pay per views, ain't bad. Boom. 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 Sit like city, sit like city, bitch. Sit like city, sit like city, bitch. Sit like city, sit like city, bitch.